My name is John. Uh, we're from Michigan. I was 17 years old when we made this decision. I felt there was no possible way that I could raise a child. I remember sitting in the abortion clinic thinking to myself, this isn't right. I never said anything to Della. I just sat there saying nothing, feeling shame. I hoped I was doing the right thing, not knowing the horrible regret from this decision. We went on with our lives and got married, but never talked about it. I tried to forget about it, thinking it would eventually go away. I was wrong. I blamed myself for not standing up for my baby. Inside, I felt shame and I blamed myself for being a coward. We never talked about it. I'm not making any excuses for what we did. I totally take blame for this abortion. There are many days of regret for this decision. I have much sorrow and despair. Later in life, I was baptized in the Catholic Church. When I was baptized, the abortion, the loss of our beautiful child, who I miss so much, was the one thing that I was ashamed of. But I'm so thankful to God for giving me for this terrible sin, for forgiving me. Please don't ever abort your child. Life is precious. Abortion will change your life forever. And if you have had an abortion, please turn to Jesus for his forgiveness and mercy. Rachel's Vineyard is where Del and I began our healing journey. You can have a peace in your heart knowing someday he will meet our child in heaven. Again, a child is the most precious gift from God. A precious child is the ultimate gift that we all share together in the world. We should always stand for life and not the emptiness of the culture of death through abortion. If our story can save someone else from having an abortion, that would be so great, because to this day, I still wonder what kind of person our child would have been. That's why I'm silent no more. My name is Della. It has been 43 years since my husband John and I made the terrible choice to abort our baby. We both had experienced trauma in our childhood. We met in my senior year in high school. I was graduating. Graduation is supposed to be one of the most happiest times with so many beautiful memories for me. I want you to know that when I look back at my graduation year, what always comes to my mind is the murdering of our daughter, Mary Elizabeth. I will never be able to forget that trauma. Like a lot of teenagers, John and I didn't think about the consequences of having sex. After discovering I was pregnant, we chose abortion. We never thought twice about our decision, not knowing we would be wounded for the rest of our lives. I have blocked out most of what happened at the abortion clinic. I remember other women in agony, crying, vomiting, and despairing. Just like our babies, my life and the lives of all those other women were sucked out of us during our abortions. When I walked out of the clinic that day, I was not the same person. I hated myself and I did not care about others like I should have. How can you care about anyone or yourself when you just took the life of a helpless baby? I also knew once a life is created, it exists forever. And I had totally separated myself from God. John and I ended up getting married after the abortion, but we didn't talk about it for years. It was something that was too hard to bring up and we have never knew how to share our regret of feelings with each other. Angry and unable to forgive ourselves, we caused our children to suffer. In 2007, after attending the first March for Life, I was able to finally find the true forgiveness for my abortion. I had went to confession. It had been the seventh time, as knowing I never felt the forgiveness. I went into the confessional and the priest asked me if I truly believed God had died for me. 
And I said to him, yes, I know he died for me. And he said, my daughter, let go and be free because there's no sin greater than God's mercy. I believed the Lord. Instantly I felt the Holy Spirit touch my heart. When I came out of the confessional, I had such a different feeling. One I hadn't experienced in 22 years. I, have also t I had also attended, me and John, uh, Rachel's Vineyard Retreat. And now we are lead facilitators in Lansing, Michigan for these retreats. Like so many other women and men, they will learn to know God's mercy and unconditional love. When I felt God calling us out to go and give our testimony of our abortion, we realized that our daughter Angela was born on January 22nd, the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Angela was the first baby we had after the abortion, and we feel the birth of our daughter is a triumph over the Supreme Court decision which has led to the loss of so many precious lives, like her sister, who we have named Mary Elizabeth. John and I know we have to forever live with the decision and mourn the loss of our daughter, Mary Elizabeth. Through the grace of God, he restored and forgave us. He has walked with us. Please know that with a repentant heart, God has truly given us the strength to forgive ourselves. But more than that, I would like to thank all of you for offering grace to me for what I have done and listening to my testimony. We as a nation have to stand up for these precious innocent babies and the women and men that suffer. That is why we are silent no more. Thank you.